Coming to you live from New York City, it's Jim Caruso's Pajama Cast Party. And now, here's your host, Jim Caruso. Thank you, Billy Stritch. Hi. <laughs> He's nowhere near. Um, how are you people? It is Monday. Uh, my favorite day of the week. Uh, I, w I just wait all week for this with bated breath and uh, so always so happy to be here with you. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our pajama cast party. This is our 20, oh God, Ruby, 9th, 29th, I think, uh, episode and uh, couldn't be happier about it. We have a killer show for you tonight. We have Ben Cameron, uh, James Richardson with Zach Day, uh, all the way from Nashville. Sean Taylor Corbett, his mom, Lynn Taylor Corbett, with a great story and a, a great project. Uh, Connor Simpson and Eric Jordan Young. I love this cast and I love this show already. Uh, so many things are happening, but I want to update you. You know, if you go to the Pajama Cast Party website, there's a little uh, link at the top for, thank you, for ye old gift shoppy, uh, where you can buy all the crap. Uh, we're talking t-shirts, hats, shower curtains. I know, I'm sorry. Uh, mugs, love a mug. Uh, and my favorite thing is when people send us pictures of themselves holding using or wearing said crap. And here are some that I've gotten this past week. <laughs> this makes me so happy. Okay, let's pull up, uh, Ruby, pull up Linda Pearl. Linda is a fabulous TV actress and movie actress and theater star. You know her. Oh, Linda. Hey there, just, uh, you know, on the turkeys, hanging out, having our uh, cast party coffee. Go Jim. <laughs> turkeys dogs barking uh, i love it linda thank you uh nicholas king was enjoying our new scented candle i added the flame myself in photoshop you're welcome uh ava nicole francis a fabulous singer uh who uh performed with us a few weeks ago uh there she is in her hoodie and mug that's right jane hughes I love Jane Hughes, enjoying her coffee in a Julie Halston darling mug and a cast party t-shirt. Mark Buckley in the cast party t-shirt in front of Birdland, for heaven's sake. And last but certainly not least, our friend Stephen Matthews, all the way from London, sent me this. It's the cast party mug with the phantom mask. He did phantom on Broadway for many, many years. He's a fabulous singer and he's also a fragrance. Oh, Jane, you got an apron. <laughs> oh my God. Jane Monheit, one of the best singers in the world. Um, so Stephen Matthew Matthews did a, a wonderful review on our, our scented candle and it's on his fragrance blog. I mean, crazy. We'll talk about that next week. I'll show you that uh, review. And uh, Stephen might be coming to us next week from London, England. There, I talked about this, Stephen, so you don't have to send the plague of locusts. Just saying, he, he made me. Uh, thank you, Sean Gale, for my lip balm. I was using Vaseline on my lips last week, and he thought that was inappropriate, so he <laughs> sent me a present. Thank you. I love it. By the way, it tastes like peach. Um, Ruby. Oh, Ruby. Oh, Jim. Oh, Jim. I mean, so much to discuss. So many pictures. So much crap. <laughs> but good crap. You know what? And we really shouldn't be calling it crap because the holiday no. season is among us. And I mean, why wouldn't you want to get your friends, family, loved ones, some pajama cast party merch? I mean, truly. I mean, what's so better? Mm. It works. Um, <laughs> so Ruby, why are we here? That's what I ask you every week. Why the hell are we here? 
Um, I think to bring some joy to everybody because I mean, the world is just every single week. I feel like the world is getting crazier and I feel like we need pajama cast party more and more every single week. We really do. We love, first of all, this whole thing was Ruby's idea, honestly. And uh, she makes it happen uh, from her apartment uh, in Midtown. Uh, she's also made it happen from her place in Nashville where she lives with her, her mom, Victoria Shaw. She's bi-coastal. Uh, but now she's here in New York uh, make, making it all, making the showbiz magic happen mm -hmm. for us. And I can't thank her. I can't thank you enough for making this happen every week. Um, but here's why we do it. We do it to entertain and we also do it so that we can uh, make a nice donation to Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS each, each week. And um, we also love it when you send us a little donation or a tip to keep the platform running um, and so that we can we can make a nice donation. So Venmo, PayPal, all the information down downstairs. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Every week as you've Julie been Halston would say, so generous, yes. As Julie Halston would say, no donation is too small and certainly no donation is too large, so. That's correct. That's correct. And I, we said last week that if anybody, this is a deal you can't pass up. If you send in a thousand dollars, we'll send you the cast party shower curtain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's I know terrifying. you're proud of that graphic, Jim. So I figured I would just, you know, I know. throw the it in. The water again, actually, do you see the movement of the water coming out of the faucet? That yes. Took me, that took me minutes on on Canva. Yeah. Uh, okay. So every few weeks, our brilliant friend, Justin Squiggs Robertson, joins us. He is, first of all, he's a great singer, but he is an extraordinary caricature artist. Yes, uh, there's yeah. his website. There's his website. He sits in his studio and he does quick sketches of all of our guests. He's a genius. He's also the Broadway caricature artist of now. He's the, the Al Hirschfeld of now. Uh, and this is so fun. He starts when we start. Can we can we look over his shoulder, Ruby? Can we see yes, what he's up to? Yes, absolutely. I'm excited. Let's just see. Turn on the camera. Oh. Oh, look, he has a nice mug, too. Oh, look at my smile. Today. I'm very happy, apparently. You are very oh, happy. Oh, there's me. Okay. Yeah, that's my hair. Those are my eyebrows, unfortunately. <laughs> You know what, yeah. Jim? They yeah. do say big brows are in. I grew up with big brows, so I, I'm I all know, for that. I don't know if they're big. They're just, they look like lip um, uh -huh. in the best way. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you, Squigs. At the end of the show, I will, uh, we will pull up the finished product. Squigs will have done quick sketches of all the goings on here. So what's funner than that? if indeed funner is a word. Um, down there, there's a subscribe button. We yes. Want you to, we want you to subscribe or- Yes, sus we do. Subscribe, as the kids say, uh, so that we can keep you abreast <laughs> of all of the goings on the Cast Party Network does. That's Billy Stritch's uh, 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 weekly concerts. That's Julie Halston's virtual Halston talk show. That is uh, Ruby Lochner's monthly talk show, which we're so excited about hearing about the next one. Um, what else? Oh, uh, Gabrielle Stravelli, um, extraordinary singer, is is on our, our little network. And, and might uh, I just say before I go away, so speaking of the shows that are offered on the Cast Party Network YouTube channel, Virtual Halston comes back for season two, October 30th. We've taken a three, two-week hiatus. Yeah. Uh, Julie's off shooting a movie, very fancy. We love her. Um, but yeah, season two is coming back. And then for us, just because I think it's important for people to kind of know. So next week we will have cast party on the, what, what day is that? The 20, 26, 26, Six. yes. Six. Next week we will have cast party, but the following week we are taking the week off for the election, just so that people know so that they don't come to this YouTube channel and get very confused. But then we will be back the Monday after that, which is, the ninth 
Hopefully we can throw a big celebratory pajama cast party. Dear we Lord, will. I hope so. We and just will. Yes, we just will. Uh, Jim will come as Jimbo the Clown. I will come as uh, Rubo the Clown, and it's going to be great. So, uh, yes, but just so that people know, next week there is a cast party. The following week, no cast party. That's correct. And and on Virtual Halston, Julie's guest will be Bill Irwin. Genius, Bill Irwin. Okay, let's get this going. Ruby, are you ready? I'm so ready. I'm flying out. Uh, okay, goodbye. Thought she'd never leave. That's not true. Uh, okay, are you ready? I I'm seeing some of your comments here. I see Jane Monheit. I see Audra Berger. Oh, you guys are so great. And thank you for the the uh, the tips and the donations are already coming in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, our first guest is a Broadway veteran who appeared in Footloose, Aida, and Wicked. But he really became extra beloved when he created a show called Broadway Sessions, a musical theater variety show which proudly celebrates Broadway geekdom. Here's my friend, Ben Cameron. It's all about the geekdom, Jim. It's plain and simple, geekdom. Listen, you, I, I'm with you. You know I'm, I, I'm as much of a geek as you. Although I think you are much more knowledgeable about the details than I. Do you think so? I, I don't. Get I know so. Of, I don't get accused of being particularly knowledgeable very often. Well, I, take I mean, that. I feel like you and our friends Richie Ridge and um, who else? Oh, Seth Rudetsky. I mean, you have these facts right off the top of your head. I'm like having to Google <laughs> who was in this. I mean, it, it's kind of embarrassing. I'm so into the people. I'm not always knowledgeable about their background. But that's what you have, and you know so well. I guess I, I guess I try, and and you know what it is? It's just fun to take what we all were as kids, which was just nerdy little freaks of wherever we're from, and turn that into some sort of career. Um, <laughs> just you know, do you remember? I remember like sitting in front of the big speaker in my in my living room in Orem, Utah, and like like going through the librettos of Phantom of the Opera and Les Mis and trying to figure it all out and memorizing everybody's names. And so if, if that gets me somewhere now, then so be it, Jim Caruso. So be it. Well, I'm interested that you were in the original company of Wicked. Yeah. And even more importantly, you're on the original Broadway recording. Sure. I would like you to reenact mm -hmm. that historic moment yeah. that's on the album for our audience tonight. It's really, let's let's be honest, it's plot pivotal. And I'll tell you what, the 14 year old theater geek inside of me, I, I'm exploiting this one moment that I could be heard on a cast album for the rest of my life. Absolutely, do it. Here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, Glinda, is it true you were her friend? Pull that out of parties. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, that's a beautiful moment. Well, you know, I've, do you want to hear a good story about that? Not really. Okay, here it goes. So a couple <laughs> years ago on my birthday, they had just announced who the director would be for the Wicked film. And I don't remember who that is. So there goes all my gay theater knowledge. And Lin-Manuel Miranda, you heard of him? Up and coming song. Yes, yes I love her. Yeah, yes. she's, she's <laughs> adorable. She <laughs> tweeted um, to that director, whoever it was, Hey, at that director, uh, can I play the guy who says, Glinda, is it true you were her friend? And that was on my birthday. So I immediately tweeted back as the guy who says that on the cast album. I, I give you my full blessing. And I'm honored. <laughs> he didn't that respond. is so weird. He didn't, respond? he didn't respond? That's such a good thing. Well, I, I mean, so. I mean, who would think that the one, you know, a quote you pulled out of your ass is the, the guy that said it is reading it. I know. Well, someday we'll meet face to face and we'll have a cuddly moment about it. Well, here he is, ladies and gentlemen. No, that would oh be weird. God. Okay. <laughs> Tell me. All I'm wearing is my mother's Victoria's Secret robe. <laughs> oh, and thank you for the robe. Absolutely. It's a pajama party, Jim. I know. People have really gotten on me about not wearing pajamas, but I, I'm over it. Uh, how did Broadway sessions come about? So that's a great question. Long, long time ago now. We've been going for 
over 12 years at Broadway Sessions. We started as a bar show at a bar called Therapy that we would do on Tuesday nights. You're familiar. I'm uh, familiar. You've heard of it. Therapy. I've, we're familiar with all of it. Therapy and therapy. Uh, yes. And I, it came out of, I had been singing and dancing in Broadway shows for a really long time. And I went away on my last tour after leaving Wicked, I did Sweet Charity on the road and I came back and I just needed some sort of creative outlet as I was kind of hanging up my dance belt. And I had to ask myself, what are the things that I do or what are the things that I know? And I knew that I knew a lot of people in the, in the biz and I liked hanging out in bars. So I said, what can I do to make those two things happen at the same time? And we were born as a little bar show, and now 12 years later, we're still rocking and rolling. And it's great. Um, you know, we have incredible support from the community, you know. Uh, I do. I do. Well, we kind of do the same thing. So, Yours yeah. is completely different than mine, but it's we, yeah. we work with a lot of the same people. And sure. I mean, what is it about the Broadway community that excites and motivates you so much? Because I know it does me. Sure. It, they are the... Obviously, let's start with the obvious. They're the most talented, interesting, crazy people that you could ever meet. They're they're endlessly smart and insightful and empathetic and sympathetic and and they're so keyed into their emotions and uh, are reactionary and wild. And I, there's no more fun playground than this beautiful community and and the way that this community gels together and supports one another is worth supporting and we're celebrating. Well, you've done so many cool things and you are on PBS stations everywhere uh, for the Isn't great the performances. Thing? Look at that. Little baby Ben. Yeah. But that's amazing. It's so yeah. legit. Well, it's really weird um, for me. I like, you know, I have a potty mouth and I like to talk about, I like a good dick joke and I do a lot of stuff late at night. So I don't know how the the PBS thing got started, but I, I don't know if I'm edgy for PBS or what the deal is, but it's the most fun. And I was hosting a Broadway on 13 marathon for WNET a couple years ago, and I was interviewing Benanti. And it was the first time of all the specials that I've done where I finally got to offer a tote bag. And I, hilarious. Laura Benanti and I just had the best time talking about this leather bottom tote, which she said is her drag name, leather bottom tote. Uh, but I, I, it's just it's just a wonderful, weird gift that I've been given, and I and I love doing it, and I've done so many things now, but it seems way more sophisticated than I am. I love it because it gives you such legitimacy. Who knew, like, right? I know it's fantastic. Okay, <laughs> I want you to sing, sing for yeah. us. What are you gonna do? All right, so I. This is a song I've been doing for a while, and I it, th it strikes on a couple levels, I think. Um, it strikes on the fact that we're in a pandemic and we're not touching each other. Uh, and it speaks to me in the sense that I am perpetually single. And if uh, if nothing else, let this song be a desperate cry for attention and someone <laughs> to send me a DM and tell me they love me and want to date me. Perfect. <laughs> no pressure. Great. So what's going to happen is I'm going to very clumsily press the button on my computer and, okay. then, and then like act into a light. Oh, I can't wait. Okay. I love you, Jim. Thanks for having me. There must be one sort of decent guy out there who's willing to hold my hand, hold it for all to see, sweaty though it's bound to be. Cause if he held my hand, he would own my heart before the count of three. And maybe I could trick that guy to fall in love with me. There must be some sweet fool who would dare to take my hand on a crowded street or at a table in some cafe or even halfway through a matinee. 
He'd sometimes squeeze and sometimes stroke and sometimes let it be. And maybe I could trick that fool to fall in love with me. I wouldn't care what those five fingers did all day. They could roll cigars or detail cars or draft a spaceship that flies to Mars. They could feed the homeless or match up DNA. As long as those fingers are tangled up in mine by nightfall, anything, everything's okay. There must be one sort of normal chump out there who's willing to take a leap. Give me a second look. Skip the cover. Read the book. And when I find that chump who is willing to embrace my one demand, I'd give the moon because he held my hand. My strangely clammy, chewed up fingernailed, often trembling yet Virtuosic, antibacterial lotion wearing hand. Oh, man, that was gorgeous. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> look, 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 look front. And look, look front. Point at your bum. Balloons. What is happening? <laughs> Are you having a breakdown? That just came on my thing automatically, so I went with it. What was it? That was one short day from Wicked. <laughs> But do you know how sometimes on your iTunes it will just continue to play? Yes, so I do. It took me halfway through that to realize you weren't playing it. <laughs> so I just went for it. So there you go. There's some original uh, Broadway choreography for you. Didn't I it. love it. Oh, wait. We we have a, a comment from Stephen o. Halverson. Oh, look, Ben, you've gotten lucky tonight. Thank God, Stephen. Thank God. Oh, I'm, in, I'm in Utah right now. But I'm Are I'm you? girl. You know I love Utah. Uh, I've it, never been, but it's but it's a lot of Osmonds there, and there are so many Osmonds. They're all so pretty, and they all sing and dance beautifully. I love them. I love the whole family. Uh, ben, I can't thank you enough for joining us. You sound gorgeous. You're you're sure. just zippy and perky and entertaining, and I appreciate it. I'm just weird AF. Um, I adore <laughs> you, and I I was really sad that we didn't get to do our annual gig together this year. I know we had such a good time. We always co, or we don't always, but we have co-hosted the uh, the uh, Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS flea market yeah, in so in uh, Schubert Alley, which yeah. is so much fun. Love right. doing. Uh, it. I we'll do it you again. Talking you, huh? We'll do it again. Of course we will. Great. I love you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks everybody. Bye. bye bye. Thanks Ben. Oh, he's entertaining. I like him. So many thanks to some terrific people who are. Uh, donating and being kind and now I can't find them. Lois Leftwich says hi. She was excited about the dance belt comment. Um, Lisa Goodman, Audra Berger, Rick Hinkson, Todd Foreman, Todd Petzel, uh, William Larkin, Sean Gale again, Jeffrey Wolper. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support. Speaking of dance belts. <laughs> 
continued support. Hello. <clears throat> uh, our next guest, are you ready? Uh, James was a child prodigy singing bluegrass and folk until he swerved into the jazz lane. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing that. And uh, I don't know anything about uh, Zach Day other than uh, he's from Kentucky. <laughs> but we're going to find out a lot more. Here they are, James Richardson and Zach Day. Hi. Hey. Oh, there they are. You we scared me. Now. You scared me for a minute. <laughs> we're here. <laughs> Hi, friend. Okay. Their bathrobes and headbands. Yeah, we came prepared for the pajama party. We're we're ready for bed, honestly. We, we may have missed the memo a little bit, but <laughs> I love it. And I like the head first of all, bathrobes and headbands sounds like a an rock band. I kind of I yeah, I kinda like that. I'm gonna write that down and save it for later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are here all the way from Nashville. Yep, we're yes. here in Nashville just chilling and taking it easy and Spending a lot of time together, arranging and, and um, putting the music together, and you know, hunkering down a little bit during these last couple months. And I know what are our choices? That's what we do. Uh, now, James, you started in bluegrass as a kid. Yeah, is that right? And, and how did you swerve from bluegrass into jazz? Well, I just I have a huge love for harmony, so I grew up singing three part harmonies, and actually, so did Zach. Grew up um, loving bluegrass music as well, and singing it with his friends um, in Kentucky. Um, but I, I grew up and as, as soon as I went, I was homeschooled till ninth grade. So I went to a, a public high school and I stumbled on like musical theater and vocal jazz music there and just, and choral music. And that my love for harmony only grew. And then going to, I went to Western Michigan University and I sang in some vocal jazz groups there and just pretty much fell in love with jazz, just that extended harmony and just the beauty behind like the jazz lyric and all this jazz standards out there. And it's just, uh, yeah, that definitely was where my heart was drawn, so. But okay, so you, so you, you're you're loving jazz. So you moved to I'm the jazz kid. capital of the world, Nashville. <laughs> Absolutely. So both of you did. Well, so for me, my brother is down here. He actually uh, is a, a full time touring musician. He plays with some, some different op, uh, Grand Ole Opry bands, and also does his own own neo soul music as well. He just released an EP actually uh, this week. That's uh, is this your. My twin brother. Twin brother? Twin brother, yes. And so when I finished school, I was like, I, I would love to collaborate with him. Hey, <laughs> looking good, boys. <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah, I'm not even in that out. <laughs> you should definitely check out my uh, Sean's EP. It's called Polarity, part one. I'm seeing some backgrounds on, on the album, and I'm very, very stoked it's about gorgeous. that. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, so but, cool. Obviously, I mean, I would definitely love to spend more time in some other large large cities around the u.s but right now nashville's been a great transition i've met so many amazing actually amazing jazz music musicians here uh i've done some shows over at rudy's jazz room which is uh, a jazz club in town yeah uh, and it, it's just been really great and i've really been thankful and, and for every day um that i've been here so and you guys met uh on on a music a music site. What? How did you mean? It's it's not really a music. It's an app. It's kind of. Have you heard oh, of TikTok? Vine. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Like, it's kind of like TikTok before TikTok, I guess. Right. <laughs> like just like an app that you would do little six second videos. And honestly, like I met so many cool singers on there because you could just post a six second video of you doing some little riff, and people would be like, "Oh, who's that?" Like, you and know? then everyone would try to do it. And yeah, it really just challenge cool. each other and stuff. So that's how we met. And then I love it. I just moved to Nashville in, in March, and then about two weeks after I moved here was when like everything started kind of getting shut down and canceled and stuff. So I had to really hunker down for a while too. But then once we discovered that we were in the same city. We were like, yo, like, let's link up, make some music together, write, and come up with some cool stuff. And here we are. Yeah. And Zach's an incredible vocalist. He was actually on the last season of The Voice. Um, oh, Zach, yes. <laughs> yeah. The, Congratulations. Yeah, season 18, thank you. Yeah, I got to work with John Legend and get, you know, it was amazing. It was a really, really wonderful opportunity. So, like, I was it's been really weird to come from that and then, like, move here and then, like, have to kind of really just be like, okay, what's my next move? Cause I don't, I can't do much of anything, but I've been taking the opportunity 
to just write as much music as I can and connect with people like James and um, his brother. And, you know, this, th they're a good group of people to be around, especially here in Nashville. It's, it's helped me a lot. So well, yeah. show us, show us, give us a sample, do something for us. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We're going to do a tune. We're actually, we, we both love with our bluegrass roots. Uh, we love the Dixie Chicks and the, the Chicks. chicks now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the Chicks. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And my apologies. But they put out a new album. They are incredible. And this particular tune is just really, um, it's just it's so emotional and it's pretty uh, gorgeous. And we, we'd love to show our rendition of it. So do it. I can't wait. Young man. So hope you guys like it. It's up to you. 
It's up to you. It's up to you. Yeehaw. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Your voices are stupid. They are mind blowing. They are sickening. They are all the things. Thank you so much. So it's Whoa. Fun. This is so cool. Thanks for having us. That was that was a really good. This time. is such a special show. Are you have. kidding me? Well, here's the weird thing. When I lived in Dallas for 18 years, I guess what I did? I had an open mic night. Uh, and I saw these four girls once and they came to sing. And I invited them to the open mic. Uh, Ruby, pull up this picture. Oh. Or the other. Yep. What the heck? <laughs> well, uh -huh. I didn't even know there were four, four. That doesn't look like them. Uh, the two sisters are the one and, and the three. The, okay. the first and the third one. Oh. Uh, Aim, Aim, uh, Emily and, um, and uh, not Emily. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. What the hell? Uh, they I'm couldn't be more famous, and I can't think of their names. <laughs> but yes, they started out as a bluegrass quartet. And they were absolutely genius um, all the way back then, and so I've known them so long, so long. They're they're geniuses. Yeah, uh, I love but, the one tune with uh, Dad, Daddy's lessons with Beyonce. Yes, yes. that, was, that cool. was the coolest, one of the coolest things I've seen. One of the most. Uh, you guys are the coolest things I've ever heard, and <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for the for the gorgeous music and for the headbands and the bathrobes. And thank you so much. This is yeah. such a such an honor. We'll do this again. It's been a it's been a real treat listening to you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Hope to see you guys soon. <laughs> you will. Thanks, guys. Ah, thanks. Holy Toledo. Uh, Marty, thank you. Emily and Marty are the two sisters uh, from Dixie Chicks. Uh, they they were and are geniuses. Uh, thank you, Billy Gilman. P.S country music star, <laughs> by the way. Um, okay, I'm so excited to introduce you to our next guests. Now, this this is kind of a convoluted introduction, so stay with me. Lynn Taylor Corbett has had a wonderful career directing and choreographing in Hollywood, on Broadway, and for stages, uh, stages of the top ballet companies. Her son, Sean Taylor Corbett, is an actor and a singer who's been on Broadway and uh, in the Heights and on All My Children and was Romeo in Romeo and Juliet, which I believe is one of the leads. Uh, they've joined forces with a songwriter named Chris Wiseman on a new project called Distant Thunder, which I'm so excited to hear more about. Uh, here are Lynn Taylor Corbett and Sean Taylor Corbett. Hello. Hi. Yes. We don't yes. have pajamas on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not very inventive. We're, pajamas are next time. That's you know, <laughs> we thought first impression. You know, dress. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just thrilled you guys are here. Thank you uh, so much for having us. To see you both, and thank you for sharing a headphone. I love that. Yes. Oh, you know, yeah. it's it's a mother son writing team, so <laughs> we have to, you know, listen to this at the same time. Too. I love it. I love it. Okay, so Lynn, yes. first of all, I'm so thrilled that you're here. Um, I think we all became aware of your work when uh, you put the dance sequences together for a little movie called Footloose. <laughs> yes, yes. Low With those Kevin many Bacon. years back. Yes. Oh six my Six degrees. God. Always it, six degrees. Well, now it's just one degree. Yep. Um, that movie was seminal in my life. The First of all, that choreography, we have all <laughs> we have all done that choreography. And I was I was watching an interview with Kevin Bacon recently when he said when he goes to other people's weddings, he has to slip like fifty dollars to the DJ to not play Footloose. Yes, <laughs> which really made That's me very laugh. Funny. That's very funny. Because people are like, "Oh yeah, Kevin." He's yeah, like, certainly I, you can dance and flip yeah. around the bar and. <laughs> Right, at age 55, he's not <laughs> flipping around anymore, I'm guessing. Yeah. Although, Kevin Bacon can do anything. He's timeless. So I'm thrilled yeah. that you're here, and God, Thank you're you so much. Tony nominated for directing and choreographing Swing on yes. Broadway, which Thank I you. loved. 
Thank you. My friend, a lot Anne of great Hinton folks Callaway. on that with me. Yes, Anne. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, she's done pajama cast party. Oh, she, I bet well, that's she awesome. has. Just yeah. a delight, and Laura <laughs> Benanti, and just incredible cast. Um, anyway, uh, and then and then there's Sean. Wait, what's this say? Oh, Eileen, Eileen Graff. Eileen Graff, hello. Promises, promises on Broadway oh my together. Gosh. Yeah. She tried to teach me to dance. <laughs> <laughs> she tried to teach me too. <laughs> well, now, Sean, the, now, now we have to talk to you. In this project that we're talking about here, um, your lead character explores his Blackfeet tribal heritage. That's right. Uh, and this is your foray into writing, correct? And for musical theater. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I, you know, Chris Wiseman and I have been writing pop songs for 15 years, um, mostly... You know, in the pop world, I I had a an album, and uh, he writes in TV. Actually, we both we've had some songs on TV um, together, but we we wanted to tell this story with a live audience. We wanted to share uh, the first Native American musical um, with with the Broadway community, with regional communities, um, indigenous populations all around the country. But we we really. Yes, this is our, our first foray into, into writing. And we have this uh, treasure trove of knowledge in musical <laughs> theater right here. And I've grown up, you know, at so many tech rehearsals and ballet schools, playing G.I. Joes in all of her <laughs> ballet classes, you know. And so I just said, hey, this is kind of a natural progression. Let's tell this really unique Native story through uh, a genre that we love in musical theater. I think Sean, it's Sean so... is partly native, but he should say yeah. Oh yeah, now I'm 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 um, on my father's side. You know, I'm I'm mixed race, but Blackfeet is my heritage on my father's side, and uh, I I want, as well as being uh, black and um, Scandinavian on my mom's side, which is kind of cool. But I wanted to we my 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 tribe is located in Browning, Montana, so we wanted to um, ever since I was a teenager, my mom has been taking me there. Um, and I have so many great relatives there now, it's like my adopted family. Um, and we wanted to share that community with, uh, with the world. Yeah. And, and some, you know, Native people are invisible oftentimes in the media and yeah. in, also in entertainment, especially, hey, musical theater. So it's like bringing these two worlds that I love together and... Yeah, yeah. And we, we, we were given a shot by um, a wonderful organization in, in California called um, Native Voices at the Autry and uh, gave us a chance to develop the idea and then Donna Trinkoff at a Moss Musical Theater and Bill Rauch at um, Oregon, Oregon Shakespeare, Shakespeare Festival. Festival. We've, we've had so many lovely people helping us and now Michael Barron at the Lyric Theater in Oklahoma, which has 32 tribes in Oklahoma, is an extraordinary place. And we were about to open there, you know, and had to, to stop our rehearsals uh, in March because of COVID. But we also were using five members of tribes from that community. So yeah. we, we have a whole range of tribes all over the country that are represented in our show. This is incredible. I, it's, it's shocking to me, or maybe it's not shocking, how invisible this community is yeah. uh, in theater because yeah. it's so theatrical it's it, it. There's so much incredible music well, that we don't know about. So much great dance that we don't know about. Um, and it's why is it why is it this culture so invisible to to us? I Do you think have it's any reason. I think it's because um, for so long, unfortunately, and through education, um, in, in the, just in in representation. Uh, it hasn't, we haven't known the true history of, of what happened to our tribal nations uh, throughout history. In, in fact, you know, there, there's a sad part in our nation's history with boarding schools where tri uh, tribal people were forced to speak English and not their own language, um, take on Christianity, and unfortunately, you know, beaten if they did speak their own language. And so I think there was a an erasure almost that was happening yeah. not only in our country but w within you know native populations so 
there's been a real effort to reclaim that, reclaim. Yeah, it's exciting. We're yeah, it's really part exciting. Part of a movement. You yeah, know, it's, 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 really it's part thrilling. of a movement. And yeah. um, I was going to say, actually, uh, right now, we're, we're really at the cusp of, of a wave that's coming of Native theater. You know, Oregon Shakespeare Festival produced uh, the first Native play uh, a couple years ago that I was in called Off the Rails by Randy Reinholtz. Um, the 1491s is another great uh, writing team that, it was going to yell rep with a play called Between Two Knees, which I was in as well. And now we have our show, which is a musical. So there is a lot of uh, effort being made regionally to, yeah. to produce native theater. And I think right. the arts is at the forefront. And if the arts starts producing theater, then Always. in the national you know, realm, it's gonna be, we're going to become more aware of, of yeah. native voices around the country. Well, I think it's so incredibly important to share these stories. Uh, and I'm so thrilled for you and of you. And uh, you've, you've created a video, a, a, a clip, a reel of some of, this, some of this project of Distant Thunder. Tell yes. me about this clip. Well, when we came back from, um, you know, the disappointment of not being able to open in, in Oklahoma City, we... Um, Thanks to Sean and Ryan Duncan and a few people in the cast, I think. I love um, Ryan Duncan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, he's you'll watching, see him I think. soon. I hope he's watching. And lots of other great people, including Brent Florendo, our cultural advisor. Um, I think it, there was just this terrible pain, you know, that everybody felt. Uh, everybody, of course, you know, shutting down these beautiful shows. But um, our show was just getting ready to be seen for the first time. And so um, the we had the impetus from these folks to say, come on, let's, let's do a video. Let's put a message out into the world. And um, so we were able to do one of the songs. And we got cast members that had done past readings. We got a Yeah, ton it's of, really a theater company. Distant it, Thunder is like a theater company of <laughs> hundreds of people <laughs> that at random times are in the show or workshops. We've had them fly all across the country yeah. and, and do albums. But yeah, this is a, an amalgamation of... <laughs> all of our different cast members in a song that's really, you know, two, two leads, but we split it up to, to include everybody in it. So. Right. Yeah. I can't wait for the people to see this. Let's show it. Ruby. Thank you. Run it. <laughs> when we ran through the camps, a smile on your face. You knew where to go all the time From the shade in the stands To Medicine River you knew Down the road, past the gym Up the hill to the school You never let up Till the end of the day Like the moon chasing sun I tried to catch up Put my hands on my hips and yell, hold on, cause I'm running out of breath. Hold on, cause I need to take a rest. Go on, you'll soon be way out of my sight. I held on to the memory that In the crowd When I found you again You'd say Try catch me if you can You, you held bright red in both your hands Hold on Can you eat all of that? Hold on You're making me so upset So long I'll leave cause I Change. 
change and I'm sure there's still so much change I have left to endure if I can hold on I know hope will find me tonight during Indian days the voices were seen I still hear the beat of the drums we were We are getting such wonderful comments from oh. the people who are just <laughs> loving, beautiful. loving, loving it. Thank you. What a joy to, to see that, to hear that, and to watch those, God, those beautiful faces. Oh, I can't thank, thank you, you enough. Jim. Thank you so much. Thank it's you a, so it's much. a pleasure yeah, and honor to be honored. on here and, and just share this with the community and see these other wonderful artists. Thank you for doing what you do to, to bring joy into our lives yeah. while going through this. Amazing man. Couldn't do it without you. Couldn't do it without you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Thank keep you. us keep us informed as to what's going on. Thank you. We will. We and will. you know, cross fingers. We'll be there. We will. And Jim, you know, uh, at some point in the future, you know, we'll do another song. We'd love to at some point. So okay. Yeah. We'll do it. All right. Great. Lynn See and you. Sean. Thank you so Thank much. Thanks, Jim. Huh. Beautiful. Oh, I mean, that's thrilling to be able to to show an audience. Um, something that's so new and so important and so necessary. And ah, that just did my heart good. Uh, we're getting some great responses from you guys on, on the Twitter, not on the Twitter, on the, the Venmo, the PayPal. I sound like my grandmother. Um, uh, Robert, Lois, Maureen, Lisa. Thank you, thank you. Uh, if you're if you're sending through PayPal, I can't read that on my phone. So, but thank you uh, to all of you for being so every week so generous, and just keep this going, because if it's this costs money, uh, I know it's hard to believe. Uh, just you know, my makeup alone. Yeah, uh, you know what I did the other day that was so weird? I was bleaching my teeth. Uh, and nobody sees my teeth because I'm in a mask all day. So that's weird. Uh, so I, was, I guess I was bleaching for you. Okay. Uh, another guest. Are you ready? You're going to like this. I first met Connor Simpson when he sang his heart out at cast party in Las Vegas at the Smith Center last year. I was so impressed with what he did. I sent a recording, a video of the song to the songwriter who absolutely loved it. Uh, please welcome this very cool, very talented guy, Connor Simpson. Can I just say that I am so honored that you sent that to the songwriter. I had no idea that that ever happened. That is crazy. I didn't Thank tell you. you. No, no, you never had. Um, I sent it I do to have I sent it to about... Justin Paul, who wow. I, it's a song from Dear Evan Hansen, yeah, which you absolutely. sang so incredibly. And I know both those guys, but I happened to see Justin online. So I sent it to him and he was blown away. 
You killed me with that performance. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was great. Is that a role you'd like to do someday? Oh yeah, absolutely. And like, f just a funny thing about um, like people who saw that song, I absolutely adore Clint Holmes and he was at that show in Las Vegas. And so I actually came out of an honor choir performance once and my friend Maddie is actually his goddaughter. So she comes up to me and goes, hey, my godfather loved your performance of Dear Evan Hansen. And I was like, your godfather was <laughs> at the show? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, Who who's your godfather? And she was like, Clint Holmes. And Clint Holmes is my dad's favorite jazz music, like well, favorite vocalist period ever. And I told him and he got the biggest kick out of that. That was absolutely amazing. I love Already. it. I'm, I'm gonna send him this clip. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Clint Please is do. just great. We just spoke two days ago. He called to see how life was in, in New York. He's in Vegas. You're, yeah. you're not in Vegas, you're in... I'm Where? in Henderson, so. Henderson. Yeah, uh, it's almost the exact same spot. <laughs> yes. All in the same valley, so. Yes, um, now you started, uh, you're young, right? How old are you? Uh, I just turned 18 about a month ago. Right. Oh my God. Me too. <laughs> is the lighting that good that I could look 18? Um, but you start, what does that say? Remember, remember Bill, that's Billy Stritch. He was playing piano that night. Oh yeah. It was absolutely fantastic. Like, yeah. He loved was, you too. Yeah. He it was loved a fantastic you too. Company, but you but started yeah. really, really young. You're singing in church, right? Uh, yes. Uh, my dad's a worship pastor. I think I sang my first solo when I was three or four. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Look at little you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh my God. Are you like a theater kid? Is that what you really want to do? Um, yes. Just theater, just singing in any capacity um, would be just something that'd be really fulfilling for me in my life. Yeah. Amazing. What's your life like in Henderson right now? Um, Lockdowns have been um, pretty tough, uh, you know, like just like as a student, like having so many opportunities kind of just vanish. You know, I'm a senior in high school, senior years online right now. Um, when I was a freshman, I, I had set out to achieve the goal of being number one in my state for my voice part for choral singing. And I did manage to do that this past winter. But unfortunately, um, like all state choir got canceled um, oh. a week before our first rehearsal. And that was like a huge blow for me and really hard. And I mean, on a more personal level, um, two of my grandparents died over uh, the summer. My, my grandma, my, my, my dad and I took an emergency trip down to Arizona uh, because we got a call saying that she didn't really have much time left and they wouldn't let me in to go see her because of COVID restrictions. And my grandfather on my mom's side, um, he actually passed away from COVID. Oh, so God, yeah, it was so sorry. have been really hard, but um I am pushing Listen. on and getting through it. And, you know, singing is still an outlet for me. And it's something that I really enjoy that's gotten me through all of it. So 2020 is the all time worst. There is nowhere to go but up. Yeah, um, honestly, that's what I've been thinking, too. Yeah. But you've done yeah. some amazing things, too. Uh, you've sung the national anthem for the L.A. Angels and basketball championships. Is that scary? Um, yeah, it's scary when you're in person. Um, funny that you mentioned that. Uh, I was scheduled uh, this next season to sing for both um, the, the Giants and I was on backup for the Mets. And while those both got canceled, uh, some good actually did come out of that. We were able to uh, get together with a, uh, a friend uh, who is uh, has a uh, video studio down um, uh, pretty close to the Las Vegas Strip, actually, and record myself in team gear singing the national anthem for both of those teams. And they used them in stadium. So uh, oh I, I in New York, maybe not in person, but uh, you know, I was hoping maybe my first performance would be at Birdland, but uh, yeah, it was soon. Really awesome. very soon. Okay, what are you gonna sing for us tonight? Um, I'm going to be singing the song Michael in the Bathroom from the musical Be More Chill. Do it. Awesome. Connor Simpson. Thank you. I am hiding in the bathroom at the biggest party of the fall. I could stay right here or disappear and nobody'd even notice it all. I'm a creeper in the bathroom cause my buddies kind of left me alone. But I'd rather fake pee than stand awkwardly and pretend to check a text on my phone. 
Everything was fine when I was half of a pair. But through no fault of mine, there's no other half there. So I'm just Michael in the bathroom, Michael in the bathroom at a party. Don't know how long it's been. Michael in the bathroom, Michael in the bathroom at a party. No, you can't come in. I'm waiting it out till it's time to leave. And I'm picking at grout as I softly grieve. I'm just a Michael who you don't know. Michael, but I'm so low. Michael in the bathroom by himself. He is hiding, but he's out there just ignoring all our history. Memories get erased, soon I'll get replaced with a newer, cooler version of me. And I hear a drunk girl sing along to Whitney through the door. Oh, I want to dance with somebody and my feelings sink because it makes me think. Now there's no one to make fun of drunk girls with anymore. So I'm just Michael in the bathroom. Michael in the bathroom at a party. I half regret the beers. Michael in the bathroom. Michael in the bathroom at a party. As I choke back the tears, I'll wait as long as I need till my face is dry. Or I'll just blame it on weed or something in my eye. I'm just a Michael who you don't know. Michael playing solo. Michael in the bathroom by himself. Knock, knock, knock. Knock. They're gonna start to shout soon. Knock, 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 knock. Ah, oh, heck yeah, I'll be out soon. Knock, 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 knock. It sucks they left me here alone. Knock, 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 knock. Here in this teenage battle zone, clang, 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 clang. I feel the pressure blowing up. Bang, 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 bang. My big mistake was showing up. Splash, 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 splash. I throw some water in my face, and I am in a better place. I go to open up the door, but I don't hear knocking anymore. But I can't help but yearn for a different time. And then I look in the mirror, and the present is clearer, and there's no denying I'm just Oh, I'm at a party. Is there a sadder sight than mm -mm -mm -mm. Michael in the bathroom at a party? This is a heinous night. I wish I stayed at home in bed watching cable porn. Or wish I offed myself instead. Wish I was never born. I'm just a Michael who's a loner. So he must be a stoner. Rides a PT Cruiser. God, he's such a loser. Michael Blank Solo. Who you think that you know? Michael in the bathroom by himself. All by himself, all by himself. But all you know about me is my name. Awesome party, I'm so glad I came. Yes, Connor. Thank you so much. Oh my God, okay. You have a huge fan base, first of all. <laughs> they are all freaking out yeah. they love you thank you Just so much screaming your name. all my school friends watching uh hi guys my i know my choir teacher's watching uh i take vocal lessons from a lady named joanne zajak and she's been a huge help in just the maturation of my vocal abilities and i just want to thank her as well and also shout out foothill high school which is the high school that i go to um yeah <laughs> first of all that you even used the word maturation i'm so impressed yeah uh, thank you <laughs> You have a good vocabulary. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love your voice. And I think you're so, so cool and so special. 
thank you for uh, entertaining us so royally. Now twice. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, I'd love to do it a third time if you'd ever have me back. Maybe I will. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll make a plan. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Connor. Yeah. Take care. Yes, you too. Oh, love him. Oh, this is this is nothing but pleasure tonight. I, I swear to you, I'm enjoying the hell out of this. Wait, I have people to thank. Uh, people. Oh, wrong thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, my fresh direct order is on its way. Um, Larry O'Keefe, thank you. Julie Garnier, Ryan Duncan, part of Distant Thunder, and perhaps a cousin of mine, thank you. Billy Stritch, oh, you're good too, thank you, Billy. Robert Hertenstein, wow, such a good dancer. Robert, you're, you're a really good dancer. Um, thank you all so much. Are you ready for more? This is our grand finale. Uh, you've seen him on Broadway in Susical, Ragtime, The Look of Love in Chicago. Since then, he's become a headliner in the aforementioned Las Vegas, uh, performing and running, performing a lot and running his own production company. It's Eric Jordan Young. Hi there. Hello. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. What a wonderful program. This is awesome. Isn't it so good? I love these people. I it's, love it too. I've been like entertained and I was like, ooh, I gotta better get up and <laughs> yeah, yeah. And do yeah, what just, I do. Try try to do your best, uh, Eric. <laughs> How are you, my friend? I'm doing pretty well, you know, under the circumstances. People when they text me, they're like, How are you? And I say, I'm good enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all you can ask for. Because that's what it is. I'm good enough. You know, we're 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 all hanging in there and making it happen. And it's with things like this right now that you're doing that keep us going and keep our hearts alive and, mm -hmm. and make us feel really wonderful and appreciated. And, uh, you know, it's all about the sharing and, and this is what we're doing. So thank That's you right. for, for being a vessel for that. And I can't do this without you. So uh -huh. there you go. Um, okay. So you did a bunch of stuff on Broadway, including Ragtime, which is one of the most gorgeous. What well, you did it twice. You did Ragtime twice. I did. I was pretty lucky to do that. I did the I started um, with the first national tour, and then right. I went into the Broadway company, and then uh, 10 years later, ended up doing the Kennedy Center production, which went to Broadway and, and uh, joined that as well. So that was pretty cool, it's very neat. Oh my God, that score. I mean, do you, did you just cry every night? The score makes me crazy. I still cry when I hear the score. Actually, I was talking to um, a group of students yesterday about it, and. It was really um, nice to hear how uh, people interpret the show now. And actually, I'm here with somebody who also did the show. Uh, we did the show together many years ago as well. So um, Mr. Philip Fortenberry is sitting at the piano. Philip! Yeah. Oh. Ah. What is it? It's so gorgeous. I know. I know. Man. I see you crying, Jim Caruso. <laughs> I see you crying. A little Got tear, a little cry. tear. You were also to kind of slated to do the reunion with Audra and Stokes uh, just recently, right? Talk about that. Heartbreak. Oh my goodness. Yes, I, I, yes, I was. And I was very, very excited about it. And who knows, maybe they'll still end up doing it, but. Oh, it absolutely. Very, That's gotta happen. Yeah. That's gotta happen. We will all need that. When, the, when everything gets back to normal, whenever that is, we will need a little ragtime reunion to cheer yeah. us up. Um, okay, so you did tons of stuff on Broadway and touring. Then you moved to Las Vegas with the musical Chicago, and then you mm -hmm. stayed. Well, actually, you know what? I ended up having this, it's very weird. I've had this crazy relationship with Vegas. I got my equity card by, um, and I just wanted to say that, I got my equity card by, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I did Starlight Express out here many years ago. And uh, that was in like 94, 95, 96. And with Robert Dean Herzstein, by the way, who I think is watching and gave a donation maybe, by the way. But, How nice is that? Yes, we became friends through through that show. But then I also, uh, I returned many years later and I did Chicago at Mandalay Bay. 
But then uh, a good friend of yours who you've been on Broadway with, Tiger Martina, he actually choreographed a show called Vegas the Show. And nice. I came up here and I did that. And then I've done a bunch of other things like my own show at Planet Hollywood called Shaken. And uh, then I was in the cast of Rock of Ages out here, which was very, very cool. And um, I've done a show called Cocktail Cabaret, which Keith Thompson and Philip Fortenberry created at Caesars Palace, the Cleopatra's Barge. And um, I think that maybe if I keep rattling off, I might talk too fast. And I might, you know, you might not hear me. Like, so. <laughs> oh, no, we're getting it all. We're getting it all. Um, but I know, I know you started a production company. So you're now on the other side of the table, too, uh, which I love. I love that you're doing that, uh, producing and putting shows together. And, 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 and also, tell me about Sammy and me. Well, you know what? It's interesting. I love that you brought that up. Um, it's 10 years since I did the Alliance Theater pr um, uh, production of in Atlanta of Sammy and Me. And, uh, you know, there was a, a huge, huge push for it to go to Broadway. And we got very, very close. And then the recession happened. So we didn't end up, you know, having the show go to Broadway because I really didn't want to close in 15 days, to tell you the truth. So, no. it, like, you know, that it, it kind of slowed down the process, but we're revisiting it now because the, the yeah. story and the uh, the ideology behind um, what Sammy and me is, which is, you know, what do you do when you discover that um, your hero is flawed? Um, how do you how do you push forward and, and, and still keep him elevated and keep yourself loving your hero when other people are putting that person down? You know, Sammy Davis Jr. had a very complicated life and uh, it's worthy of um, respect and it's worthy of his story being told. And um, I love singing his material and, and, oh. and tapping into his energy. So, yeah. Well, the material is, is the best in the world. It's the it best is. best in the world. And who better than you? A true oh. triple threat to bring <laughs> that. I mean, what you did in, in Tiger Martinez Vegas, the show, I, I saw it twice. I loved it so much. I was so proud of you. I was so proud of Tiger. Um, uh, I just thought that was a masterpiece. Um, thank you, thank you. It was really, really fun, and I had an excellent time. And you know, it was a wonderful way to uh, to to bring myself back to the the Vegas landscape. You know, so there's some incredible talent in this town. I and, know, uh, I know. I think that there are a lot of people out there who are like Vegas. They're just out there doing their thing. But no, I mean, I'm telling you, this is a town that has a lot of magic and a lot of like really incredible people out here who are doing their thing. So I'm I learned that when Billy Stritch and I started doing cast party out there, I mean, I don't know what I expected, but I didn't expect such a such a, com a community, a right. really tight community of people who loved each other, knew each other, hung out with each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's an extraordinary bunch of people and the talent is ridiculous. Well, if you do come back here, I will because I still have my ticket to come to your show. So you know, you know. Oh my God! Well, that is that is hilarious. Hey, you know, you keep the good tickets. <laughs> Same for us. Tickets. I still got them. You know, posted on share. I got the share ticket. You can't, Janet Jackson. You got the. You know. No, you you don't even joke it. about share because share is is a whole other world that I love. <laughs> I, I am a share freak. Uh, sing for us. Oh wow! Well, I would love to. With Mr. Fortenberry at the piano. What right. What could be better? Well, here we go. I hope you like this. I have a feeling I will. <laughs> I don't know why I'm frightened. I know my way around here. The cardboard trees, the painted scenes, the sounds here. Yes, a world to rediscover. But I'm not in any hurry. And I need a Oh, a whisper. 
whispered conversations in overcrowded hallways. The atmosphere as thrilling here as always. Feel the early morning madness. Feel the magic in the making. Yes, everything's as if we never said goodbye. I don't want to be alone. That's all in the past. This world made it alone enough. I come home. decided to explode. Um, so I'm going to thank you while he gets back on. That was so beautiful. What a perfect way to end the night. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ruby. You're fantastic. You're super cool. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Well, that means so much coming from you. Thank you so much. Uh, I well, I am sure. The magic, too, you know, because you were like, I think you had that vibe going on with as if we never said goodbye today. You know, I, you know, that's been my song for today. I told you that was like what came on my like music shuffle right before I came on for tonight. So thank you so much. What a perfect way to close out the night. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. And please come back again when Jim's computer doesn't decide to go rogue at the very end of the night. <laughs> He's going to be so mad at me. I broke his computer. Don't He's going to be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much. And I'm sure we'll see you on here again soon. I hope so. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold. We are trying to get Jim Caruso back on. Hold on. All right. Give me a second. This is definitely a first. Um, okay. Let's try this. Oh my gosh, this is certainly a first. I've never had to actually be Jim Caruso. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I know I said that like for Halloween, I would maybe dress up as him, but like I didn't think that hosting was gonna be a part of it. Um, well, that was fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for yet another week of um, donating both your time and your viewership, but also your incredibly generous Venmos and your PayPals. Um, it truly means the world to each and every one of us. Um, again, that information is right here on the screen. Venmo is Jim Caruso one PayPal Caruso two and two at AOL.com. And I really do mean this, not just for our show, but for every single live stream, 
um, that is being produced by somebody in the arts, if you can, please donate um, because this is the new medium for the time being and we all need your support. And also, let me just flash this up on the screen one more time, squigsonline.com. Squigs, the incredible artist who comes on and does our sketches every few weeks or so. I mean, it is truly just so amazing. We are beyond lucky to have him. Uh, cannot thank him enough. Jim says things are happening. Speaking of squigs, I'm going to download the final image. I'm not going to show it until Jim gets back on screen because that wouldn't really be fair. Then it really would be me being both myself and Jim Caruso. And there's only one Jim Caruso. Okay, he says things are happening. So let's see. <laughs> um, in the meantime, what can I do? Let me plug some shows. So again, please subscribe to the Cast Party Network if you haven't already. Uh, and that way we will be notified every single time we post a new video or we go live. We have so many shows going on. Um, we have Virtual Halston every single Friday. Season two is coming back October 30th. We have Billy Stritch's show uh, that we pop up every single week after it's done live. We throw it up on the Cast Party YouTube channel as well. Gabrielle Stravelli's show, we have that every single week as well. My show, once a month, um, the Talkback with Ruby Lochner. We are about to announce the new guest for um, the second, second installment. I have so many people texting me. What is going on? <laughs> Hang on. Oh, I think, hang on, somebody's coming through. Oh okay. my God. Okay. Jim! That's at first. Jim, you missed That's it. I did happened. this whole outro. I did this whole outro. I was you. I was giving them banter. I was giving them content. I was advertising. I mean. I can barely <sighs> use, so I'm just going to keep talking. Um, what a nightmare. And now people are texting me and it's bothering me. Um, hi, how are you? Hi, people. I'm putting my glasses on. Oh, this is fun. Okay. I have a feeling <laughs> that performance was absolutely gorgeous. I heard, I don't know why I'm frightened. <laughs> Click, and then nothing. So that was pleasant. And now I know why I'm frightened. Um, hi, thanks for, thanks for hanging in. Thanks for chatting with the people, Ruby. We have Squigs, Jim. Can I show his final picture? Yes. Oh, okay. So as I said, Justin Squigs Robertson does quick sketches of everybody that's performing. Ruby, pull it up. Oh, my God. How great is that? Oh, my God. It's extra good. Squigs, you're just unbelievable. How do we find Squigs? Put his um, put his website up on the, if you need an opening night, get an opening night. Cause you know, all the theater you're doing. Uh, if you need a present, a Christmas gift, uh, just a, a wonderful uh, creative thing to give away or just for yourself. Squigs is the guy. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think it's time to go. I think it's time to have a breakdown and throw my- uh, Next week, next week, next week. Yep, I know. Uh, next week, we'll be joined by Broadway royalty, Laura Osnes, show business royalty, Monica Mancini, and fashion royalty, Isaac Mizrahi. That's right. He sings, he talks, nobody's funnier, nobody's more, a He's a perfect New Yorker. He has so many great stories, star-studded, that's for sure. Uh, and he's uh, he's going to entertain us wildly, to say nothing of Monica and Laura. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for putting up with these last uh, few minutes of terror. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Ruby. Thanks, Squigs. And thanks to our beautiful, beautiful cast. Good night. Thanks for watching Pajama Cast Party. To follow us on YouTube, just hit subscribe.
Click on that little bell and we'll keep you updated on future shows. You can also follow us on Instagram at Jim Caruso's Cast Party. The end.